Yesterday I found one of my experiment engines hidden away in a box standing on a shelf where it had been standing for many years. So I thought the time had come to take it out into the light and try to start it again. I built this engine 1987. It's a two-stroke, one-cylinder, a post-piston engine. The fuel is petrol and the ignition is high-tension ignition. The two pistons in the cylinder takes care of, on this side, the exhaust ports. This is the exhaust pot. And the other piston in this side take care of the sucked in and mixed air and fuel and the transfer ports. I have made a simple carburetor for the engine. This is the air valve at the usable and a needle valve for the fuel at usable too. And behind is a membrane non-return valve for the suction. You can hear it when the piston sucks. Talking about the ignition, this is a high tension ignition coil and this is a breaker point. And they are mounted on a turnable unit for the ability to change the ignition timing. Then there is a spark plug it's situated beneath the cylinder. The reason for building this engine were two things. One, the ability to be able to adjust the compression ratio even when the engine was running and two, to have two smaller flywheels turning opposite ways. But first to the adjustable compression ratio. I got the idea of connecting the two pistons to gear wheels and then be able to change the position of the gear wheels compared to each other, thereby changing the time when one piston got to the top dead center before the other. I will try to explain the connection between the two pistons. The piston pin goes out of the cylinder on each side. There's a groove for it to travel in and it's connected via connecting two connecting roads to two big gear wheels with cranks. And these gear wheels are again connected to smaller gear wheels, one, two, that's mounted on a shaft and on the end of the shaft is a flywheel. And again the small gear wheels are connected to other small gear wheels that's mounted on the shaft and has a flywheel on the end of this shaft. This is a look of the other piston, the suction piston. So the small gear wheels on their shafts are linked turnable. I have made a little handle for this and they are turnable about the big gear wheels axis. I will demonstrate in another way. I will hold tight on the flywheel and then look at the piston there and the piston there and compare the travel length. And you can see the one at the right is travel inwards, the top dead center, and the other one is nearly standing still and it's out again now. My idea of 
having two flywheels running opposite ways was to eliminate or to have less impulse vibrations and I could use smaller flywheels because they are running at double speed of the crankshafts. Another thing is that when you change the compression ratio thereby changing the position of the pistons compared to each other you also change the opening and closing timing of the exhaust ports and transfer ports. The bore of the engine is 25 mm and the stroke of each piston is 29 mm. The engine is water cooled and the funny looking thing over here is a cooling tank. Now I'm in my outdoor test room. I have had the engine running so uh, let's see if it starts again. On with the ignition. I will adjust the compression ratio to a lower point. So listen to the exhaust, it's more loud because the exhaust ports are opened earlier. Now I will try to start the engine backwards. One more time. <laughs> 